Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 2 Tutorial 1A. This tutorial will focus on accounting for short-term interest-bearing notes payable. This tutorial has one basic learning objective and that is to review accounting for short-term interest-bearing notes payable and short-term meaning for a period less than one year. This tutorial is based on the Olson Developments Inc. or ODI problem, which covers notes payable. So please make sure that you download the accompanying file, which contains the data and requirements for this problem. Our first requirement for this problem is going to be as follows. We will assume that the note payable on the land purchase was 120 days and bears interest at 5%. We'll need to prepare the necessary journal entry to record the purchase, interest payments, and final settlement of the note under two assumptions. One, that interest is paid monthly, and two, that interest is paid upon settlement of the note, and that ODI's year end is August 31st. We'll begin with requirement 1A, and this is a situation where the interest is paid monthly. Our first journal entry is going to be on June 1st, and that's to record the purchase of the land from Luther. So we will debit land for $31,000, credit cash for the $1,000 down payment, and then credit the note payable for $30,000. Our next journal entry will be the first of four to record the interest expense that is paid on the note on a monthly basis. So the first interest payment is on June 30th. We will debit interest expense for $125 and credit cash for $125. And that's calculated as the $30,000 principal balance at 5%. Remember, the interest rates that are quoted are always annual interest rates. So that's 5% per year, but then multiply by 1 over 12 months to give us $125. We will have four months of interest, so we'll eventually need total interest expense of $500, but we will record these only one at a time. Note here that the same entry will occur for the months of July, August, and September. And here we have it, the remaining three entries for July, August, and September, all debiting interest expense and crediting cash for $125. The last entry here will be to record the settlement of the note. On September 28th, the note matures. So we will now credit cash because we are going to pay off the note of $30,000 and debit the note payable for $30,000, and the note is settled. The next requirement, 1B, a simple variation. In this case, the interest is going to be paid at the settlement, so at the end, whereas requirement 1A had the interest paid on a monthly basis. In this case, no interest is paid monthly. It is all paid at settlement. And remember, for this part, the year end deemed to be August 31st, 2020. For the full set of entries, we start with the purchase on June 1st. There's no change from the first entry. We're going to debit the land for $31,000, credit cash for the down payment, and credit the note payable for $30,000. Recall with this one that the note is due on September 28th. However, we have an intervening year end at August 31st, so those pesky year ends create a bit of a problem for us. We have to accrue the interest that has been accumulating since the purchase of the land. So this entry here is going to be an accrual. We are going to debit interest expense and credit interest payable for $375, calculated as the principal of $30,000 times 5%. And if we prorate that one over 12 months, that's $125. But because we have three months, we have a total of $375 in interest expense for the year-ended fiscal 2020. Now, technically speaking, this is just a more practical note here. Interest is accrued at the end of each month as time passes to facilitate the optimal matching of expenses. But for illustration purposes and educational purposes, it saves us time to just do a large accrual for the full amount at the end of the year. Now, our final entry to settle the note will be on maturity of the note at September 28, 2020. We are going to debit the interest expense for the remaining $125. So that's one month left of $30,000 at 5% times 1 over 12 months. The interest payable that we already set up now also needs to be debited for $375. If we envision a T account, here's the first credit and here's the debit. So that interest payable is now exhausted. We have a balance in the note payable account that has a credit of $30,000. So we're going to debit that to remove the note and credit cash for the $30,000 principal plus the $500 interest. 
here is the principal and 30,000 at five percent times four over 12 months is the five hundred dollars in interest so that's where thirty thousand five hundred comes from now we can finish up with some key points to remember any notes payable that are less than one year do not require any present value calculations right so the time value of money doesn't apply we don't need to worry about that next interest must be accrued at every intervening year end this concludes tutorial 1a on short-term interest bearing notes payable you want to now proceed to tutorials 1b and 1c to review accounting for long-term notes payable